church say? Amen. Amen. Praise God. And time is quickly passing by, so we welcome you. If you have dots gotten inside here, we want to turn your attention at the back here. Just wave your hand. Sister Rosa is our Bible worker. Just want to look at her again and just remind you that is Sister Rosa, our Bible worker, and we give God thanks. She's a member of the team here at the New Life. What do you say? The opportunity and the privilege given to me to introduce the preacher, the speaker, God's mouthpiece, and it's made easier because some people here know him better than I do. In the name of Jesus, Pastor Randy Skeet is an evangelist, a preacher, theologian, and he's also a married man. Won't you say praise God? I looked it up that he was born in Barbados, but was raised in Anchor and Arbor, Michigan. I tell you, he has gone to the schools of the prophets. And I looked at the list online. He has gone to uh, Ethiopia, Zambia, Tanzania, Malawi, Indonesia, Uganda, Philippines, England, Australia, Kenya. The list goes on and on and on and on. Just recently, uh, I think well, like about four days, came back from Africa. And then here he is again on the battlefield. What a man. But I'm not here to introduce the preacher because the preacher is in to talk about Jesus. Amen. I want you to keep a song and a prayer for this evangelist. I went online and I got something. A man said here, a lady said, Colleen said, um, she was impressed. She said, I have never seen or heard anyone else who has memorized so many portions of the Bible with chapters and verses. You are an inspiration. Praise be to God. And there's this guy from, um, he said I'm from uh, the Sudan, he's, he's a student, a Sudanese student living in Turkey. And he said there is no church because he's living in an Islamic country. He got converted to, from Catholicism to being a Seventh-day Adventist by listening to sermons online. He said, God bless Pastor Randy. His sermons are touching and he liked this pre-sermon common saying to put a phone aside if you're not using it phone can ring and disturb you but the hard copy can't pray for god to put word in his mouth uh, jeremiah 1 9 and he also said um come let us reason he said god is a reasonable god what a man with a message my prayer for pastor I want to say welcome to you pastor we welcome you at the New Life Seventh-day Adventist Church. We might be at one of the smallest places. Come on. But we serve a big God. Come on. Somebody know what I'm talking about. We serve a big God. We have been praying for you, Pastor. Morning at 5 o'clock, we're on the prayer line. And heaven came down morning after morning. And we know that he's a man of prayer too. When I went to pick him up yesterday, before we even move off from the stand, he said, let us pray. What a man. Hey, here to, produce, to present to you a man of God with a message from God. Open your heart to receive God through his man's service. He's only a conduit. Let us, my brothers and sisters, listen to the word of God through his man's servant. Before we come, we'll have... I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. If the handheld mic is less uh, distractive or distracting, I'll use that. All the and all the time. Let's try that again. God is good. And all the time. Now, when you say God is good, are you saying that because you're required to say that? Or are you saying that because God has been good in your life? Let's try it again. God is good. All and all the time. 
Psalm 100 verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Let me say the last part of verse 5 of Psalm 100 again. His truth endureth to all generation, not error, truth. Uh, you're not listening. You're sleeping with your eyes open. Listen to me again. His truth endureth to all generation, meaning that one day God will come and put an end to error and to those who persist in living their lives by error. He will wipe out both. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, read verse 6 as we talk about truth. This is not my message, but it just came to me. 1 Corinthians 13, we read verse 6. When you have that, say amen. I see you have a habit of putting verses on the screen. How many of you have Bibles? This is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. All right? Don't put the verses on the screen. Pick up a Bible. Please. One day, you will not have the privilege of having one of these. That will be taken away. Enjoy the pleasure of holding. There are people who have lost their lives to make this book available to you and to me. All right. There are 1 Corinthians 13, verse 6. I'll give you time to find it. Those of you who lost the screen privileges, when you found it, say amen. amen. All right. Read that verse for me. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Now, I want you to read that verse microscopically. Tell me what you observe. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, that's on this side, but rejoiceth in the truth. Now, we have iniquity on this side. We have truth on that side. What do we have? We have iniquity. We have truth. What do we have? Two opposites. The opposite of truth is iniquity or error. In other words, error is iniquity. You're a little slow. Are you always this slow? I thought you were from Jamaica. Jamaica is a place of brilliant people. Error is iniquity. And the wages of iniquity is death. The wages of error, death. The reward of truth, eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so I, get, I say again, his truth endureth to all generations. When Jesus prayed to his father, in John 17, he was praying to his father. This is what he said. Sanctify them, come on, through thy truth. Finish it. Thy word is truth. Error, false doctrine, cannot sanctify you. Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. This is not my sermon, but it's coming to me. First, by the way, those of you online, welcome, welcome wherever you are. May the Lord bless you as abundantly as we believe. He will bless us in this place. What book did I say? First Thessalonians, what chapter? What verse? Three. Let's take a look at the will of God for your life. Read with me. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Stop. Sanctification is the will of God. For I frequently hear people say, what is God's will for my life? Read the Bible. Sanctification, the removal of sin from the life, is will number one. Are you with me? And so this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Now, keeping in mind that sanctification is God's will for us. Listen to Jesus Christ praying now. Sanctify them how? Through thy truth. Thy word is truth. It is God's will that this sanctifies your life. Listen to me again. False doctrine may excite you. It cannot, finish the words, sanctify you. The Bible says God gave one man to one woman. If you have three wives, that may excite you. It will not, come on, sanctify you. 
I can go on point by point, but I won't. I'll deal with that during the service. Who is present among us? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May your hand. You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May your hand. Ah, God bless you. What's your name? Joanna. Hello, Joanna. Thank you very much for coming. And may the Lord bless you and your family in every possible way. Provide your needs. Remove your sicknesses and protect you from your enemies. Say amen for Joanna. Amen. That was weak. Say it again. Amen. Joanna, I hope you'll come back again. We will be delighted to have you. Anybody else? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. Perhaps you're in the overflow room. Any hands in the overflow room? You are not. Now, the next time I make that call, I want to see hands raised like trees. Are you following me? Which means that's your responsibility. The way to fill a church is for one person to bring how many? One. Is this mic working? <laughs> How do you fill a church? <laughs> one person <laughs> brings one. All right. Our subject for today, get out of the way. What did I say? Get out of the way. If you're not using one of these, turn it off until it's dead. If you're using it, turn the sound all the way down. Are you with me? You don't need sound to read. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Let me tell you a secret about my words. They cannot save you. They can mislead you. They can save you. They may discourage you. They cannot sanctify you. You are sanctified by thus saith the Lord. I'm asking you now, ask God from time to time, simply in your heart, Father, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. That request is based on Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. What a privilege to have the divine hand touch a mouth made of dirt. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. Second Samuel 23 verse 2, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. I want God to put his words in my mouth and in my tongue. Favor number three, think. Isaiah 1 18, come now. Let us do what? Reason together. The reason why some people worship where they worship, they don't stop and think, what am I doing? The reason why we end up in some catastrophic or romantic relationships, we don't pause and ask ourselves, what am I doing? Why am I with this man? Why am I with this woman? Why am I doing what I am doing? Stop and think. Come now, says God. Let us reason together. We serve a reasonable God. Can you say amen? amen? The devil is unreasonable. God is reasonable. He will listen to you. Adam, where art thou? Talk to me. Cain, where is Abel? Talk to me. What hast thou done? Talk to me, says God. I will. Why do you constantly disobey your parents, said God? 16-year-old boy, 16-year-old girl, talk to me. Because Jesus was 16. I'll listen, I'll understand. Let's pray. Father, don't turn your back on me. I need your help. If you forsake me, God, my only option is out of darkness. And so I wrap my arms around the cross. Father, you'll have to drag me from that cross because I'm not letting go. Let the blood of your son fall upon me. And for his sake, hear me. I am human. I am dirt. You must help me, dear God, to speak divine things. If I've offended you, forgive me, Father. Forgive me quickly. Don't be like I am holding grudges, dear God. Forgive and forget. And speak through me that those listening may hear your voice, not mine. Bless those listening, dear God, in this building and online. You know what's in them, I do not. So while I'm standing blind, you be my eyes. Save them. 
Put a special blessing on Joanna who has come to worship with us, dear God. Bless her in such a way she will never forget. Bless those online. A special blessing on all little children who are listening. Now, Father, bless this country of the United States. Help the leaders to remember somehow that the Most High ruleth in the kingdoms of men. Bless every nation represented by those online watching their God. And since this church is largely from one country, bless Jamaica. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Go with me to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. We shall read from verse 14. Matthew 5, reading from verse 14, it is now 20, what? 25 minutes after 12. What time do you usually get out? Hmm? When I'm finished? You may live to regret that, but <laughs> I'll try to be temperate in all things, including preaching. Can you say amen? All right, but if you pray, ask God, put his words in my mouth, it will shorten the message. My words tend to be long. God's words are right to the point. Can you say amen? What book did I say? What chapter? What verse? Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Read with me. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now, we'll pause. I want you to read verse 16 microscopically. We have some friends coming in. Good to see you. God bless you. Let them find a seat. There must be seats somewhere around. If some of those purses with thousands of dollars can be moved, we will find seats for God's handsome brothers and sister, sons and daughters. All right, let's read verse 60 now. How are we reading? I, read with me. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now, what does God tell us to do? Does he tell us to shine? No. He does not tell us to shine. What does he say? Let something shine. Let something now. The Bible says your light. Let's take a look at your light. What does that really mean? Go with me to John chapter 1, and I want you to think. You must think. John 1, we'll read from verse 1. Our subject, get out of the way. John 1, reading from verse 1. Yes, well-known passage. When you found it, say amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Read verse 4 again. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now let's pause. In him was? But that life is also light. Where did the light and the light originate? In Christ. Where was it placed? In man. Tell me again. Where did it originate? With Christ. Where was it placed? In man. Verse 5. And the light shineth in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was? Pause. Let's take a look at John. Go to Luke chapter 1. We'll read verse 13 to 15. Let's take a look at John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Let's look at Luke 1. We'll read from verse 13 to 15. Our subject, get out of the way. When you found it, say Amen. It's just the one book before John. It shouldn't take you that long. Do you have it now? But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. Finish the verse. And thou shalt call his name what? John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. Now read verse 5, verse 15 with me. For he shall be what? Great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb, from the womb to the tomb, or just before the tomb, John the Baptist was 
filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, the Bible says in the beginning of verse 15, for he shall be great, finish the next few words, in the sight of the Lord, not in the sight of man. He shall be great. Now, who is saying that? The angel Gabriel. But what is an angel? A messenger cared. Therefore, the angel is saying what? What he received from God. So God said, he shall be great in, the, in my eyes. Now, let's go back now to John 1. Listen to verse 6. Remember, this man is great in the sight of the Lord. You have John 1, 6? There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Now carefully and microscopically, tell me what you observe in verse 8. Come on, read it. He was not that light. Stop. <laughs> he was not that light. Now, describe John the Baptist again, as we read in Luke chapter 1, verse 15. He shall be great. Who will regard him as great? God himself. He will be filled with what? The Holy Ghost. Here is a great man filled with the Holy Ghost. What does verse 8 of John 1 say about him? He was not that light. Neither are you. Now you talk to me. Come on, tell me. Not me. <laughs> mm, listen to me. You and I are not that light. It is to shine through us. But we are not that light. Now, let us go back to Matthew 5. Let's read verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which art in heaven. Now, my good brother, all right, come, come, come and help me, come and help me. Let us assume there is a doorway behind you, okay? Everybody following me? And online, there's a door behind you. I want to go through that door. And I said to you, would you let me pass, please? What do you do? You step out. Mm -hmm. Step out of the way. And I pass. Thank you, my handsome brother. Step out of the way, and I pass. Now, apply that to Matthew 5, verse 16. Read it for me. Come on. Let your light so shine. Stop. What do you have to do? Get out of the way and allow the light. Yes. We are the problem. We get in the way of the light because we think that we are the light. <laughs> you are not the light. Please don't get angry with me. Nor am I the light. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. You and I are not that light. But in order for the light to occupy us, there must be room for the light. Uh, nobody's listening. Are you listening? There must be room for the light. And in order for there to be room for the light, something has to go. What is that? Self. The dark, well, self is darkness, yes. <laughs> self. The long version of self, darkness. That has to go to make space for the light. This, let me pray again. Fathers, I continue. Speak through me clearly that a child might understand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This is what Jesus did. Let's go to our scripture reading. We'll pick it up from verse 3 of Philippians 2. Well, let's pick it up from 5. Of Philippians 2. That clock needs to be rebaptized. It's misleading. I have 25 just about to uh, something. What book did I say? Philippians, what chapter? 2, what verse? 5. Now read 5 without looking at your Bible. Come on, this is a Seventh-day Adventist church. This is the Sabbath. Hmm? Say it with me. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now you can read. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Pause. Read now. But made himself of no reputation. The Greek means emptied himself. Now he emptied self 
that something else may fill that place. Stay with me and remember my, my first, uh, second request. Say, Father, put your words in that man's mouth. In his humanity, Jesus Christ emptied himself. To make room for what? Let the Bible tell you. Let's go to John 5. And if we will follow that pattern, this church will be so powerful, the government will tremble at the very sound of your name. You know, Eloi says that in early writings, page 227, paragraph 1, I saw that if the church had always retained her peculiar holy character or nature, the power of the Holy Spirit, which was given to the disciples, would still be with her. The sick would be healed, demons would be cast out, and she would be a terror to her enemies. You hear the name Adventist and people tremble the way Jericho trembled when the Israelites were coming out of the wilderness. They heard what God had done. But we, we, uh, what book did I say? John, what chapter? Five. Let's read from verse 19. When you found it, say amen. Read it. What does that say? John 5, 19 says what? Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you carefully now, the Son can do nothing of himself. Stop. What does nothing include? Nothing. Are there exceptions to nothing? No. Listen to Christ. The Son can do nothing of himself. Keep reading. But what he seeth the Father do. Favor number three. What's that? Thing. Jesus said, I can do nothing. Now that's in his humanity. I can do nothing of myself. What I see the Father do. Keep reading. For what things soever he doeth, this also doeth the Son. Like what? I can do nothing of myself. I do not run my life. Go to verse 30 of John 5. Read with me. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is right because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which have sent me. Jesus says, look, I can of myself do nothing. I didn't come for my own will. I came for someone else's will. Jesus emptied himself to make room for what? The Father. Because he came... To show the universe what the Father was like. Now we're seven out of this. We know the great controversy. Satan accused God's law, accused God of having a law that cannot be kept. He accused God of being cruel and whatever. Christ came to show the universe because angels don't understand everything. They're created beings. They do not understand everything. That's why we are spectacle unto men and to angels. And so the angels have to learn what God is really like. Christ came to show not just this little world, as Ella White calls this, an atom of a world. He came to show the universe what God is like because the cross of Christ secures not only this world, the cross of Christ secures the universe. Let me tell you something. What keeps us from sin on this earth? Christ. What do you think keeps the angels from sin in heaven? <laughs> what do you think secures the unfallen worlds? Christ. Christ. And he came to demonstrate to the universe, this is what the Father is like. Not this is what I am like. This is what the Father, is. and so he emptied himself and made room for the Father. Now you can understand God was manifest in the flesh. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to John chapter 7. Our subject is what? Get out of the way, which is a long way of saying empty yourself and make room for Christ. As Christ emptied himself and made room for the Father. Because as Christ reflected the Father, we must reflect Christ. John 7, reading from verse 14. When you found it, say amen. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? 
Jesus answered them and said what? My doctrine is not mine, but the Father's, which? Mm -hmm. What I am saying is not from me. I don't know how to read your expression. You're looking at me. Listen to the words of Christ microscopically. My doctrine, read with me, is not mine. Name a doctrine of the Bible that Jesus preached. Come on, quickly. Righteousness by faith. Where did he get it? Where did he get it? From the Father. That's not his. Name another one. The seventh day is the Sabbath. Where did he get it? From the Father, not from him. Not in his humanity. He got it from the Father. What I preach is from someone else. Forgive. That's from the Father. He told me what to tell you. Now, nobody argues about the Father. If he's divine, they argue about Jesus. So Jesus, okay, you want to argue? Argue with the Father. Because all that I say, he told me to say. No one discusses the divinity of the Father. They argue about Christ and the Holy Spirit, not the Father. And so Jesus says, what you're hearing is from the Father. My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Let's go to John chapter 8. Our subject, get out of the way. And by the time this message is over, I hope many of you have made a decision to get out of the way. That the Lord may work marvelously in your life and in the crusade that begins shortly. Do you have John 8? Nobody answered the guest preacher. All right, verse 26 to 28. When you've got it, say amen. Let me pray again. Father, continue to be with me. Strangle my carnal nature that God into submission. That your glory becomes my only business. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have what? Aha. Uh -huh. I only speak what I've heard of him. Nothing else. That's why a preacher in a pulpit should only preach from this. Not his opinion, or somebody else's opinion. This, are you with me? This comes with the highest authority, God himself. Verse 27, they understood not that he spake unto them of the Father. 28, then said Jesus unto them, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I can do? Come on. We read that in John 5, 19. We read it in John 5, 30. I can do nothing of myself. But as my father, come on, have taught me, finish it, I speak. I speak these things. Christ emptied himself. Anything I do is really what? The father doing it. But he's doing it through me. Stay in John 8. Go to verse 40, 40 of John 8. You have that, but now, read with me, ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you what the truth, come on, which I have of God. This did not Abraham. Jesus said, the truth I speak, I got it from God, my Father. In his humanity, he emptied himself. It was all the Father, the Father, the Father. Because the universe needed to understand that God is not a sniper with a high-powered rifle trying to pick you off each time you make a mistake. That impression is from Satan. That's the way Satan is. He picks you off. And then he puts that on God and people believe it. The devil has a plan, a trick he uses. He takes his characteristics and tries to put them on God. So people are scared of God and cooperate with him. That's why most of the world follows Satan. Go to John 12. John 12. Let's read 49 and 50. Our subject, get out of the way. A quarter to one. We reassemble at what time this afternoon? Five o'clock right here. Bring somebody with you. You have John 12, 49 and 50. Read with me. What does that say? For I have not spoken of myself. Stop. What does that mean? 
I have not spoken on my own authority. Not that he didn't speak about him. Yes, he told people about himself, but with the authority of God. So that wasn't self-promotion. It was promoting the Father. There is no self-promotion in the gospel. Are you with me? I have not spoken of myself, but a father was sent me. He gave me what a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. He did not give me a suggestion. The father commanded Jesus. Say this. Did you not recite the Ten Commandments? As God commanded Christ, he commands us. A commandment is not a suggestion. Jesus was under a command from the Father to say what he said. Verse 50, and I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Pause. That's a very powerful statement. What's the purpose of a commandment when given to us? What does God want? Give me one word. Obedience. Then what is the obedience? Life everlasting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Obedience is life. Disobedience death. is death. That's why the wages of sin, because the long version of sin is disobedience. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Keep reading. What does the verse say? Whatsoever therefore I, uh huh. So I, whatsoever therefore I speak, as the Father have told me or commanded me, so I speak. So I speak means exactly as he said. With no variation, no editorializing. If the father said six, I say six. If he says seventh, I say seventh. That is emptying of self. Go to John 14. John 14, our subject. Get out of the way. Did Jesus get out of the way, yes or no? Oh, yes, entirely. And the Father could work in him for the Father's glory. That's why Christ could say, I have glorified thee on the earth, have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. John 14, let's read 8 to 10. When you found it, say amen. amen. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, she was the Father? Carefully now, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Finish the verse. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Pause. Think. The Father that dwelleth in me. But there must be room for the Father to dwell. And the Father and self cannot dwell together. Because self is what led Lucifer to his rebellion. The Father and self can never be roommates. One has to go. And who goes? That's your choice. In the case of Christ, self left. The Father came in. And occupied every square millimeter of the life of Jesus Christ. We, you and I, we have a way of giving ourselves to Christ 99%. And we say, Lord, here is my life. Don't tell me who to date. Leave that 1% for me. Come on, God, be reasonable. I've given you 99. Let me handle 1%. And God says 1% under your control is qualification for hell. You didn't hear what I said. You see, we, we view religion statistically, not God. God deals with it precisely. One sin unconfessed will take you to hell. How many sins did Adam commit before God threw him out? One. By the way, which means God can't admit you with one. Ah, you're gone quiet. It's okay. You th oh, <laughs> you think <laughs> he just saved you from my wrath. He said you, you're thinking. Read verse 10 again. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Verse 10 of John 14. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. Question for you. Am I reading from God's word yes or no? Am I having you read with me? Are they my words? No. 
The Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Now go to verse 24 of John 14. Read with me. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine. Come on. But the Father's which sent me. How many times did Jesus have to say, everything I say, I get from the Father, not me? We are familiar with the game of football. You watch it on Sundays. You follow the playoffs. Is there a Sunrise professional team, the Sunrise football team? You have that. If one player goes from the Dolphins to the Pittsburgh Steelers, he has to forget the Dolphins playbook. Are you following me? Get that out of his head. And fill his head with what? The Pittsburgh Steelers playbook. And those playbooks are complicated. But he has to make room for the Pittsburgh Steelers playbook. If he's on the offense, the offensive playbook. On the defense, the defensive playbook. Forget the Dolphins. Get that out of his head. Steelers information. You come to Christ. You get the playbook of Satan out of your head. And fill it. With God's playbook. Are you with me? Amen. This is it. This is it. Now, let me really get you angry with me. If God is not filling you, what's filling you? It's obvious. Come on. One word. Self. Let's take a look at self. Are you with me? Let's go to Galatians 5. Let's look at self. Give me another word for self. Start with an F. An L. The flesh, yes, that's self. If you're not filled with God, here's what you're filled with, because there are only two options. You have Galatians 5, from verse 19. May the Spirit of God guide my mind as I take you through this passage. When you found it, say amen. amen. Now, read with me. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. In other words, on and on and on and on. That's the work of the flesh. Now, go to Mark chapter 7. Mark 7. Mark 7, let's read verse 20. Jesus speaking of Mark 7. Our subject, get out of the way. You have Mark 7, verse 20. Read with me, what does it say? And he said, that which cometh out of a man, that defileth the man. Stop. What comes out is what defiles. We have a long list in Galatians 5. Let's look at another list. Verse 21, for from within, out of the heart of men proceed what? Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetous, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil nile, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. Finish 23, all these evil things come within the man and, yes, they come from within. Now, all these things take up space. When God is not occupying, that's what occupies I'm not saying every person commits all those crimes. No. But the potential, the seeds of possibility lie in every human being. What Hitler did in World War II, any other human being could do. What Jack the Ripper did in England in the 1800s, any human being could do. What Attila the Hun did, any human being could do. When God is not occupying your life, that is what fills you and me. That's why Christ said, you've got to be born again. You need to be a different species altogether. You see, in your unconverted condition, you're a pig in slop. Are you with me? I have not come to wash a pig because he's still a pig. Are you following me? Uh, nobody's listening. I'm not coming back to sunrise. <laughs> you wash a pig, you've still got a pig. Because a washed pig is still unclean. Christ came to change you from a pig to an eagle. No resemblance at all. You have different status. Now you soar with God. 
You saw with angels. As the, we're told in Zechariah chapter 3, verse 8, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. When God cleanses you, he equips you and qualifies you to hang out with angels. Jesus wants to shine through you. Here's what Peter tells women married to unconverted men. See what he, he tells women. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Our subject is, get out of the way and let God fill your life. And then let him work through you and me. 1 Peter 3, let's read from verse 1. Our subject, get out of the way. When you found it, say amen. amen. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection, come on to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wife. Conversation means conduct. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. What is Peter saying? If your husband is an unbeliever, let him see your upright life and still respect him as your husband. That will get him. Don't nag. Let him see Christ in you and let that attract him to Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, meaning he emptied himself. Who occupied that space? The Father. Go to 2 Corinthians 5, let's read verse 17. If you don't believe what I just said, well, the Bible is making it clear, but you still have doubt. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, another familiar verse. When you found it, say amen. amen. What does it say? The amen. amen be Christ. The creature, all things are? Uh -huh. Behold, all things are? Amen. Now, that's not the verse I wanted, but it's a good verse nonetheless. God was in Christ. Doing what? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. God was where? In Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. Now pause and think. Think. What does, yes, verse 19, what does reconciliation require? Give me one word. Death. Mm-hmm. Death. Go to Romans 5 quickly, then we'll come back to 2 Corinthians. Romans 5, read verse 10. What does reconciliation require? Romans 5, verse 10. Our subject, get out of the way. It is now five minutes to one. Time for food is coming up, but this is food. Can you say amen? amen. All right. How many of you have said, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth? Anyone say, ah, God bless you. Ah, thank you. The rest of you who are so attractively stubborn, please pray for me. That the Lord may speak through me. All right. What book did I say? Romans, what chapter 5, what verse 10? Read loudly. What does that say? For if when we were, we were reconciled to God, how? By the death of his son. Stop. What does reconciliation require? Death as payment for sin. Sin brought about a broken relationship. Death is a foundation for that restoration. We were reconciled by the death of his son. Now, go back to 2 Corinthians 5. Let's read verse 19. To wit, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Which means somehow, God the Father, notice I said somehow, participated in the death of Christ. Let me say again, I said somehow. Let me put it differently. In, in Hebrews 2 verse 9, go there with me. I said, talk about the father participating in the death of Christ. Hebrews 2, verse 9. You must tell me, slow down. I get excited. I go too quickly. Tell me, slow down, please. Please say, slow down. Do you have uh, Hebrews 2, verse 9? When you found it, everybody say amen. amen. Read with me now microscopically. But we see who was made a little lower than the air. Come on for the that he by the grace of God should taste death. Yeah, crown with glory and honor, yes. That he by the grace of God should taste death for pause. According to the Bible, and as good Seventh-day Adventists, tell me something about how much the dead know. The dead know nothing. 
Ecclesiastes 9, verse 5. The living know that they shall die. The dead, you cannot talk to your grandfather who's dead. You can go to all, all the witch doctors you like and the wizards and the psychics who read your pop. You cannot talk to a dead person. The Bible says the dead know nothing now. If the dead know nothing, go back to Hebrews 2 verse 9. My friends online, I hope you're still with us. And put two and two together. And I'm coming to a close. I'm glad you didn't say amen. <laughs> Hebrews 2 verse 9. <laughs> Do you have that? Let's read again. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should now stop. What did he taste? Now, listen to me carefully. You pass this question, you get a PhD. In order to taste something, you have to be living. <laughs> mm -hmm. A dead per You see, tasting is a way of knowing. Ah, you're not following me. You see the five senses? That's how we know. By hearing, smelling. I know there's a skunk. Why? <laughs> mm -hmm. Tasting, seeing, touching. Yes. Now, to taste is to know. The Bible says the dead. So when Jesus tasted death, he was still alive. That's how the father could taste it with him. The only person who's ever tasted death is Christ. When he died on the cross, it put an end to the sting of death. Are you with me? You see, that's why there's mercy killing, you see. You kill to stop suffering. You put people out of their misery. You unplug the machine. To taste death, you've got to be alive. And Jesus tasted death. By the way, what he tasted in Gethsemane is what every lost person will taste. Who has stubbornly refused truth. Listen to me. It is suicidal to say no to truth. What's our subject? Get out of the way. God wants to shine through you. Not around you. Through you. But the light is blocked by your refusal to forgive someone who hurt you in uh, 1944. You won't forgive. The light is blocked. And God says, let it shine. Which means do what? Forgive. Let the light shine. Mm -hmm. Get out of the way. You're in a relationship the Bible cannot condone. Hmm? You're seeing somebody else's husband or wife. God says, I love you. I don't like what you're doing. I can't shine through you. Let me shine. What does that mean? Break off that thing. Get out of the way. Hmm? God says, I want to shine. But I checked my accounts in heaven, and I don't see your tithe and offering. And my word says, you curse with a curse. <laughs> because you've robbed me. God says, I want to shine. But you've got to do what? Return that tithe and offering. It doesn't mean God abandons you, but he cannot do what he wants to do. Get out of the way. Surrender. Question four, you don't answer me. What is it that's blocking God's light in your life? Don't tell me. But something is blocking that light. And God says to you through Christ, let it shine. Get out of the way, please, says God. And you have to get it out of your life with God's help. I don't care what it is. You're working on Sabbath. Of the Ten Commandments, the most important is the, ten, the fourth. Remember the Sabbath day, and God says you've got to get that out. Mm. Get it out so I can shine. It was because Jesus emptied himself completely that the Father filled him how? Come on, listen to my words. Jesus emptied himself completely and the Father filled him completely. Mm -hmm. 
Was Jesus human? Yes. Are you human? Yes. Is that how God wants to fill you? Yes. Do you know, listen carefully, you won't believe it, but I'll tell you. When we surrender to God and obey him, he loves us exactly as he loves Jesus. I told you I'll give you the Bible, not my impressions, even though they're nice. Go to John 17, then I'll close. John 17, let's read from verse 20. Well, let's read from 22, save time, 22, 5 after 1. John 17, Christ is praying to the Father, and the disciples are listening. John 17, verse 22. When you found it, say amen. Read with me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. 23, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me. Finish the verse. And hath loved them, how? As thou hast loved me. Read verse 26, nice and loud. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. Let me say it again. God loves the obedient child as much as he loves Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. How can you turn your back on that? He loves you as he loves Christ. Some things just challenge the brain. How can I believe that? Because God said it, and he does not lie. And so the Bible says, let your light shine. What did I say to my brother? Let me pass. What did he do? He stepped out of the way. God is saying, let your light shine. Get out of the way of the light. And give me one word that blocks the light. It's three letters. Starts with an S. Ends with an N. Sin. Give me the long version of sin. Disobedience. I want you to identify in your mind what it is you need to remove to let the light shine. And make a decision right where you are. By the convicting power of the Spirit of God, you will remove it that Christ may shine out of you. Because he's the light, not you. John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. The light shines through us. So when we read, you're the light, it means you are shining my light. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father in heaven, if I have said anything I should not have said, forgive me. If I've been too hard on your people, forgive me. You know my heart, dear God, it is to see people saved when you come. Even though Christ said, the road to destruction is broad and many people follow that road, but very few follow the narrow road. Dear God, it's so sad that you who desires to save every single person will end up saving very few. And it will not be your fault, dear God. Some people just will not be saved. They love error so much. I've spoken your word, dear God. Now let the word do its work. There's someone listening to me who needs to remove something from their life that the light might shine. Let that person respond to your words. Let your light so shine. Get out of the way. If what I'm saying, dear God, applies to any of them, let the Spirit move them to act. Now, while your heads are bowed, eyes are closed, if there's something you need to remove, that Christ may fill you as much as the Father filled him, I want you to stand to your feet. There's something you need to remove from your life that may be blocking the light. If it applies to you, I want you to stand. I don't care what it is. God knows, and that's all that I care about. God knows. There's something. It may be small. It doesn't have to be big. There is something that's blocking the light, and you know it is. God, I remove that thing that the light may shine. Don't miss the message for five o'clock. It's even tougher. Here's about eyes closed. Father, your people have risen to say honestly, perhaps painfully, there is something blocking the light. Father, the problem is not the light. It is the thing blocking. And by the enabling power of your spirit, your sons and daughters want to remove those things, dear God. 
while probation still stands. Today, we have no receipt for tomorrow. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, Father, enable us to remove those things, to empty ourselves that Jesus Christ might fill us. That what we say might be his words. What we do might be his works. And what we think might be his thoughts. Literally, Father. That's the level of submission you require. Bless everyone who heard. Bless those online. Bring us back at 5 o'clock, Father, to listen to your word again. I pray from my heart in Jesus' name. Let God's people say amen and amen. Before you sit and any closing song is sung, let me ask you a few, one question. What will you take from this message? Raise your hand and tell us. What will you take? What has stuck with you? What will you remember? What might you tell someone who you meet about something you heard? Raise your hand, tell us. What will you take from the message? No, raise your hand. Raise your hand so I can see you. Yes, sister. It's okay. It's all right. The light is Christ, not you. Someone else. Raise a hand. Tell us. What will... Yes, my brother. Get out of the way completely. Because you and I, we're the problem. Yes, sister. Say that again. Uh, that's pain, but it's necessary pain. Deny self. That's how we clear it out. Yes. Like Christ, let us make sure whatever we do is Christ working through us as the Father worked through him. Somebody else, what will you take from the message? You ought to take something. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light. We're simply the lamp. That's all we are. He's the light. Huh? Well, you must empty yourself. That's what you do. Empty yourself. God can't make you surrender, which is emptying. You have to do that. Because you love him. Somebody else. What will I take from the message? Yes, my brother. Yeah, think. Mm -hmm. Think. Either you fill with the Father or you fill with those things we read in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. And they all take you down this way. Somebody else. What will you take from the message? Yes. Say that again. This is truth. And Jesus said, that's how you sanctify people. Somebody else. What will you take? Yes. Iniquity is error, error. False teaching is sin. And the wages for that, come on, death. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous thing to get up in a pulpit and preach error. Because people may go to hell because of that. And God will deal harshly with false preachers. Harshly. Somebody else, what will you take? Yes, my brother. The word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my back. It tells me where to go, how to go. What to avoid. Two more than I, yes. One sin will take you down. And that sin may have hips and lips. Are you following what I'm trying to say? All right. One more. You cannot be sanctified by error, yes. Obedience is life. Say it again. Obedience is life. I wish Adam had believed that. Father, place your hand of mercy upon your people. You love them. They may not believe it, you love them. Touch them right now and show them the benefits they got of emptying self that they might be filled with you. Because when you come, you bring everything they need. Bring us back at five, I pray. Bless those online. In Jesus' name I pray and for his sake, let God's people say amen and amen. You may be seated.